This is said to be a showcase for the high corruption engulfing the police, medical, and legal professions, a case keeping the government on its toes and exposing the rot at the heart of the system. Today, our system has the personality of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. It works with top efficiency if you have money and influence. In fact, it will even allow you to get away with murder for a price if you have the money to pay for it. But God save you if you are a working class citizen. You are such a genuine gem. Thank you for clicking on my video. I am Brooke McKenna and today's case is an ongoing case, but it is so full of information and conspiracies and cover-ups and corruption that it needs to be talked about immediately and I can update you in the future with what is happening then if that is something you would like as well because seven people have been arrested in this case and yet it all started out with a teen killer but that is what you get when you have wealthy families who believe that their money is their power and that they can escape anything, including a murder charge. I also want to say that my notification bell has not been sending things out to you guys, so if you want to catch up on my videos, please go and watch them. My last video I did about an OnlyFans model, and she is going to be sentenced, or could be sentenced, to life. It's a crazy case, so go and watch that if you haven't. Subscribe, click that notification bell, come back every week to see my videos, because I promise you I'll be here, so I would love to see you here as well. I also want to thank our sponsor, Upside, for supporting this channel and Upside is the perfect sponsor to do so because they actually give back to you. So if you two are feeling the increase in financial responsibilities lately, Upside can make you feel a bit better about your spending. Things like gas and groceries are necessities, so why not earn a little bit back while you spend? Upside gets you cash back at over 100,000 different gas stations, restaurants, grocery stores on their app. I told you guys how easy Upside is to use before, but I just wanted to to let you know I just got to a location that I found on my upside app to get gas I clicked the claim so let's do this so I've acquired the gas and I just let the app know and now they're processing to give me my cash back real cash back that you can transfer straight to your bank account frequent users earn an average of $340 per year so if you want to find out how much you can earn click the link in my description or you scan the QR code and use the code Brooke McKenna to get an extra 25 cents back on every gallon on your first tank of gas top upside earners are making as much as $300 a month now let's get into the story so in the early morning hours of May 19th, 2024 in Pune, India, two citizens would be killed by a speeding Porsche. This was around 2.30 a.m. when a Porsche tycoon sped through the street, hitting two 24-year-old IT techs who were on a motorcycle. They were said to be out with their friends, getting dinner, they had a very innocent night, and they were headed home when they were killed. The victims were thrown a few feet away from their motorcycle and landed on top of parked vehicles nearby. One died on the spot and one died later at the hospital while getting treatment. Immediately, other citizens in the area rushed to the scene to make sure that this driver of this Porsche was not going to speed away and that this would become a hit and run. So these citizens, these strangers, grabbed the driver and then there were two other passengers. The police were immediately called and the Yerwada police rushed to the scene. They took those who were in the Porsche to the police station. They first took them to the hospital just to make sure they were okay because this was a bad collision and then they took them to the hospital, and of course the victims were dealt with, one DOA and one was rushed to the hospital, but there was nothing that the paramedics could do. But the police were shocked to find that all of these individuals in the Porsche, the driver and the passengers, appeared quite young. In fact, the driver was only 17 years old. The victims would be identified as Anis Awadia, and Ashwini Costa. Now, Ashwini was actually sitting behind Anise on the motorcycle, and she was said to be the one to fly into the air. Ashwini had actually graduated from an engineering college in Pune, and she had been a top student. She got an impressive IT job. She was engaged and looking forward to getting married. She also had booked a ticket home to surprise her father on her birthday coming up, and also she was planning his retirement party. Her family said that she was one among a million. She was smart, independent. She excelled in every field, and she had so many dreams. 
but now she was gone. Anise had actually graduated from an engineering college as well. He was working in Pune for over a year at this point, and he was supporting not only himself, but his younger brother who lived with him and was studying at the time in Pune. Now, Anis was said to be very cheerful. He would make everyone his own, but his life was taken in an instant. That night, these two friends were said to be out with a big group of friends and they hadn't seen each other in a while, so they were getting dinner at this restaurant and on the way home, they were struck. Witnesses claim that it happened in the blink of an eye. <laughs> And those friends that they had had dinner with had to call their families to inform them of what had happened. Now, of course, when the victim's families were told, it was referred to as an accident, a car accident. However, the families would soon learn information about this case that would make them believe that this was no accident. It was a murder. Investigators found that this Porsche that was used in the crime was extremely expensive, but it was unregistered. It hadn't been paid for for the registry since March, two months prior. The Porsche speed was recorded at 110 and the bags opened upon the collision but this indicated that it was actually going much faster before the impact. Now, at this point, a senior journalist in India took to Twitter or X to share this case nationwide, and it only got crazier from here. You see, investigators had suspicions that these youths who were driving and sitting in the Porsche had been heavily drinking that night. So they ordered a blood sample specifically of the driver, but also of the passengers. And meanwhile, the investigation tracked that Porsche and the youths from that night, going from the crash to what they were doing prior. And they would be seen going to two different pubs and spending lots of money on alcohol. Around 10.30 p.m. on May 18th, the evening before that early morning crash, they arrived at Hotel Cozy to celebrate completing their 12th board examination for school. They were served until around 12 a.m. where they were asked to leave, and it was found that the driver had paid $577 with his father's credit card on alcohol. They would then arrive at the Black Club around 12.25 and they were served alcohol and they left around 1.22 a.m. paying the $240 bill. Shortly after, the Porsche was seen driving towards the driver's home and CCTV footage actually caught as the Porsche sped down the road the seconds before the incident. Around seven hours after this driver and the passengers were taken into custody, the driver was taken to the Sassoon Hospital around 9 a.m. So this crash happened around 2 a.m. It was still that same day, 9 a.m. This was to get his blood sample. Now, this allegedly showed that he was clean. His blood alcohol level was low. And so the next day on May 20th, the driver went before the juvenile justice board because he was 17, even though he was 17 and eight months almost a legal adult, but then after 15 hours in custody, he was granted bail and told that for his punishment, he would need to write a 300 word essay on road accident solutions, as well as work 15 days with the traffic police. When the information about his bail was released to the public that the 17 year old who had killed two people simply had to write a report, there was an uproar from the community. Again, the victim's family stated this was no accident, this was a murder, and he needs to be tried as an adult. Now, the same day that the bail was granted, charge sheets were created by investigators, but not for anyone in the vehicle. This was against two pubs that the youths have been seen at. So this was at Hotel Cozy and Black 
club at the Marriott who had been allegedly serving this alcohol to minors. You see, the legal drinking age in Huni is 21 to 24 for beer and wine, and hard liquor is only permitted at 25. Both owners of these pubs and two employees at each pub who had actually served them were charged because CCTV footage actually caught them serving different minors between May 17th, May 21st, and footage was also shown specifically showing them serving the youth from the Porsche that night. Both of these pubs were shut down indefinitely and the four employees and the two owners were arrested. However, the same day, the 17-year-old Porsche driver's father was also arrested and questioned. You see, it had been found that only an hour after the incident, the 17-year-old's father had asked a politician to go to the police station with the 17-year-old. It was alleged that the police had provided preferential treatment, VIP treatment, to this minor who was accused in two deaths. The politician would deny this, saying that he went to the police department as a responsible representative of the public, even though it was around two in the morning. But it was then found that this 17-year-old who had gone to the hospital got this blood sample taken. It was clear he was bailed out. Well, they had waited two hours after he had arrived to collect anything. He got there at nine. It didn't actually occur until 11 a.m. His personal appearance test also took eight hours and investigators began to get really suspicious of this. And so they collected the boy's blood sample once again, sending this to a different hospital for testing and they would get different results at this time. You see, it turned out that at the first hospital where this blood sample from the 17-year-old was collected, the doctor at this hospital had gotten a call, had been on a phone call with the 17-year-old's father around 14 times. This was Dr. A.J. Tweed, and the 17-year-old's father was believed to approach this doctor with a deal to change the blood samples for money. The chief medical officer would then confess that this doctor had ordered them to change the blood samples. So the 17 year olds was then replaced with what they said was a female's blood sample. It was then revealed to the public because of course the 17 year old's identity due to the fact that he was a minor was hidden, but his father's wasn't. So it was found that the 17 year old was the son of the wealthy businessman Vishal Agarwal, and the 17-year-old's mother was Shivani Agarwal. Please, I, I request police commissioner to please protect him. Please protect him. Please, 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 please. The 17-year-old was then, of course, identified, and he was Vedant. But now Vedant Agarwal was out on bail, and his father was being questioned by the police instead. So his father was accused of endangering his son by giving him that car, giving him the keys to the car, despite him not having a license and then also allowing his son to go and drink. So he was actually taken to court for this and he was sought by angry protesters outside who were throwing ink on him. This was how absolutely disgusted the public was and they didn't even know the whole of it at this point because this wealthy family had now tried to cover up and swap the blood samples so it was not shown that their underage son had been drinking. So higher up investigators heard the outrage from the public about this case and on May 22nd, the next day, Vedant's bail was canceled and he was to be held at his home. However, this was, you know, a very luxurious home. His family was rich. But Vedant was questioned with his mother about his activity at the pubs, as well as the first blood test at the hospital and what he believed happened there. He only gave vague answers though, and he said he couldn't remember anything because he was drunk. He did submit his essay for his bail and he wrote that he had a tremendous fear after the fatal accident. Because of that fear, he didn't inform the police. He tried to flee the scene in order to not be apprehended. Sources who have actually read this essay, which has not been released to the public, say it's very generic. There's nothing about the victims and it's difficult to gauge his mental state through his words. The victim's families were actually a huge reason why Vedant went from no bail to house arrest because Anis's uncle was saying that when he arrived at the police station after his nephew's death, 
No investigators take care to talk to him, speak to him about what had happened, comfort him. He said when they did speak to him finally, they only asked about the relationship between the two victims rather than anything else. Then reporters who had arrived at the police department would talk about the environment and the treatment of these youths from the Porsche. Many would say that the driver was just sitting in a chair having a good time, even though he was the one accused, that they were serving him and his friends pizza and burgers, which was then realized to be a high-fat food, which could dilute the toxicology reports. And if you remember, they were taken to the hospital right after the crash to make sure they were okay, but no blood samples were taken at that point. They went to the police station, and then they waited several hours before they actually got the blood sample after he had eaten this fatty food. It was said that the 17-year-old's family members were buying the officer's things and had yet to be charged at this point until the victim, Anish Friend, actually walked into the police department and demanded justice. He complained, and at that point, investigators registered a first information report for killing life by negligence. But then, Vedant's family was claiming that their family personal driver was actually driving that Porsche and not Vedant. But Vedant's father was not the only family member involved in this conspiracy. You see, on May 25th, six days since the accident, his grandfather was arrested for wrongful confinement. This 77-year-old grandfather, said to be the head of the family, the owner of the family-run real estate business, had taken the family's personal driver hostage. The day of the accident, the grandfather took the personal driver's phone away from him and told him to come into their home where he locked him up. He had been telling this personal driver that he was going to take the blame for the Porsche crash and that the family would ensure that he was released eventually. Then the personal driver actually freed himself. Well, his wife ended up freeing him and they came forward to the police and the grandfather was then charged with kidnapping and wrongful confinement, trying to frame someone else for his grandson's accident. So with Vedant on house arrest and his father and grandfather in custody, that is when another one of his relatives would head to the police commissioner's office. He was asked there so he could answer some questions about this entire thing. And the media was outside. So the media actually caught this relative fighting with the media saying, you can't do anything. We have a lot of money. The police actually had to intervene and usher him inside. But due to all the backlash, the police commissioner of Pune had announced that they were trying to take their time to make a watertight case and that the allegation of preferential treatment of Vedant was being investigated. He said that Vedant was in his full senses and had been charged with causing death by negligence, culpable homicide, negligent driving, endangering safety of others, rash or negligent act that endangers personal safety, and mischief causing loss or damage punishable with imprisonment. Two officers who had once been on this case were then suspended for breach of protocol. The victim's families were demanding that the Supreme Court be involved and monitor this investigation and this trial. They said somebody who squanders thousands of rupees on booze and pubs and drives expensive cars, how can he be treated as a minor and allowed to get away with a crime in which two talented young engineers were killed for no fault of their own? He should be dealt with sternly so that no other parent has has to face such tragedy. The juvenile's parents are equally responsible for the crime as they allowed him to drive the car. But this isn't where the arrests stop. So on May 27th, two senior doctors from the Sassoon Hospital were arrested for their involvement in the blood sample tampering, as well as a mortuary employee and the dean of the hospital who was sent on forced leave. Because at this point, investigators had known that the first blood sample had been swapped out and they found that of course it was swapped out with female's blood which belonged to Vedant's mother Shivani. So not only were these doctors arrested but also 
his mother, who was now part of this and arrested on June 1st. With his entire family under investigation, the father, the mother, the grandfather, their links with the underworld in India were then revealed. You see, after this Porsche crash, when the grandfather was arrested, the grandfather was then accused of another crime, and this was for attempted murder of a political party leader, A.J. Bossel. A.J. came forward to claim that in 2009, the grandfather had worked with a gangster to kill him and that he'd actually paid him to do so. This was a hitman. And this was allegedly due to a property dispute between the grandfather and his brother. And he asked AJ, who was a political party leader, to back him, but AJ was busy and he didn't do so. So the grandfather believed AJ was backing his brother instead and decided to order a hit on him. Soon after, AJ's car was actually fired at and the bullet missed him, but hit the driver instead. So AJ said that he was a victim of this family as well and they could do anything they wanted with their money and power. Now, the CBI was investigating this certain case with AJ and the grandfather and the gangster had then been accused as well. But this wasn't the only dark secret the family had because a man named D.S. Kator came forward to file a complaint about the harassment of his son. He said that he runs a construction business and his son had taken a loan from a man for that work. However, this man was adding so much interest that he couldn't pay the loan and this man began to harass him and have others harass him until he died of suicide in January, 2024. Vedant's father and grandfather were believed to have a role in this case in the harassment and they were booked on abetment of suicide. And then the father was also booked with another charge for cheating and criminal breach of trust of 72 flat owners of a residential project that he owns because the residents were claiming that his real estate state company had agreed to provide parking spots for them, open space, but they had altered the maps afterwards. So at this point, there were seven awaiting trial, and that was the 17-year-old's mother, father, a morgue employee from the hospital, two of the doctors, and two of the middlemen between the doctors and the father. So while they awaited trial, the prosecution then claimed that not only was a Vedant's blood sample switched, so was his two friends who were the passengers inside of that Porsche because of course they didn't want their blood alcohol results to show that they were heavily drinking if they were trying to say that Vedant wasn't. But two trainee doctors at that hospital have now become witnesses and they have said that they were forced to take these blood samples from the boy and his mother and swap them out and they were forced by Dr. AJ Tawar. They also said that this swap occurred in the restroom of one of the other doctors at this hospital, Dr. Harnall. So Dr. Harnall and Dr. AJ Tawar, those are the two doctors that were charged. And so these seven who are being charged together and don't include the pub owners and the pub employees and the grandfather, they're all kind of spoken about together because they were all believed to be conspiring to change the minor's blood sample for financial gain or being the ones that are offering the financial gain. So that's why they were all kind of collected together. But again, Vedant, the driver of the Porsche, was not being charged with the blood sample tampering either. And then on June 25th, Vedant's bail at his home, so his house arrest, was deemed illegal and the high court stressed the importance to adhering to the juvenile justice laws that he was a juvenile. So he was released to his aunt's home. Many were outraged with this again because they said, pay attention to his crime, not his age. The Pune police were even saying that they believed that he should be charged as an adult. But the next day, the Pune City Police filed a preliminary charge sheet of over 900 pages against the seven accused. This included 50 witness statements, CCTV footage, phone analysis, crash impact assessment, the entire sequence of events, and the forensics report. A panel was then created to look into the Juvenile Justice Board members who had first given this boy a 300 word essay for his punishment. And this panel ended up recommending disciplinary action against this board for procedural lapses, misconduct, and non-compliance of norms. Now, while all of the accused waited their trial, they were all putting in their bail applications, but the police gave a written submission opposing the bail of Vedant's father, Vishal, saying that he would be able to not only 
tamper with more evidence, but also possibly talk to the witnesses in this case and scare them away from talking. However, in July, he and the grandfather were granted bail in the Porsche crash case, even though they have other charges against them. The grandfather was actually immediately released, whereas the father remained in custody for the other case against him. Now, as far as the bail of the others and the charges awaiting them and the trials, that is all really still to come. It is a big mess, one of the biggest cases that I've seen spoken about in India and everyone is awaiting this information. So it is taking a little bit longer for anything to be released, probably because they are worried about the backlash. But interestingly enough, after this entire family was caught in this cover-up and arrested, a mother of a boy who went to school with Vedant and his friends came forward to say that Vedant and his friends had bullied her son so badly he had to change schools, that he suffered a lot of trauma due to the bullying. She tried to go to Vedant's parents about the situation, but no corrective action was taken. It seems as though this boy grew up getting to do whatever he wanted by people who believe they could do whatever they wanted, even getting away with murder. But the Pune police commissioner has said that he is going to request that the court expedite the trials due to being so high profile. And Anish father said that he was going to fight for justice for his son until his last breath. Do you think the 17-year-old, almost 18-year-old, should be charged as a minor or an adult for this heinous crime? Do you think that he would have gotten away with it due to his family if it wasn't for the media and the community exposing the cover-up that was occurring and not letting it go under wraps? How much do you want to bet that these are not the only dark things that this family has been involved in and that more will come to light and some never will because that is how these powerful families get away with doing whatever they want. Thankfully, in this case, the cover-up was not successful. It crumbled beneath them and they are now facing the consequences, hopefully being sentenced. But do you think Vedant should be charged with trying to cover things up with the blood sample tampering? Obviously, he was there. He most likely knew what his parents were doing should he be charged within that group as well? Or is this just another thing? He was a minor, so he's going to get away with that too. It's always a very tough decision for a lot of people to make when it comes to a minor who becomes a killer or becomes quite evil in their actions and does something horrific. Because technically, you want to call them a juvenile. You have those laws in place for a reason. However, the crime does not match the age. So how do you balance that out? Had you been following this case as well, let me know if you have any more information, especially if you live over in India and have heard this on the news as it's come out. Let me know if there's any more information that I can add in the second case of the update. Watching the news there, I'm sure gives you much more of an insight. Do so you think that because of all of the attention that this family is actually going to be prosecuted for the crimes they've committed. Let me know down below and don't forget to speak up. Your voice is powerful enough and I love you to absolute pieces.